France is about to rise with a new fighter, powerful, lethal, beast of the sky that would class in a new generation, the sixth generation. This fighter under development of future combat air system program, FCAS, if introduced today, would have capabilities far surpassing those of Russia's top Su-57 fighter, China's cream of the crop J-20, and even America's crown jewel, the F-35 Lightning, to make the French fighter the most powerful fighter in the world, or the second most powerful fighter in the world, as just borders away is another European sixth generation fighter that could steal the spotlight from the FCAS, the UK's Tempest fighter. The FCAS and the Tempest fighters are both individually the best thing since European sliced bread, but some believe that joining forces would be even better, like the chief of staff of the Italian Air Force, General Luca Goretti, as Italy is a member of the consortium developing the Tempest. And speaking of consortiums, the FCAS has one of its own. The FCAS is being developed by a consortium of France, Spain, and Germany to replace France's Rafales, Spain's EF-18 Hornets, and Germany's Typhoons in the 2040s. The FCAS is a parent program that consists of a Next Generation Weapon System, or NGWS, as well as other air assets to survive in the future operational battle space. The NGWS is further broken down to reveal an interesting setup, unique to sixth generation fighters. That is, the development of a main new generation fighter and a team of remote carrier drones that work as escorts for the main fighter. The fighter jet mock-up was unveiled at the 2019 Paris Air Show, and its design was as much a beauty to behold as its specifications are a recipe for lethality. The jet features an elevated bubble canopy, promising excellent visibility to its single pilot, as the jet will likely be a one-seat version, since a second pilot can relatively easily be virtual. The jet has a blended wing formation that increases the interior volume of the aircraft and allows more room for internally stored fuel and weapons to maintain a low observable profile. The need for more room is also why the stealth jet is about 25% larger than France's current go-to fighter, the Rafale. Unlike the Rafale, the jet will have two engines, but its engines will be far more powerful. More on these revolutionary engines in a bit. The FCAS has a single set of low-angle diagonal stabilizers to replace the traditional, separate horizontal and vertical stabilizers for improved stealth as it goes into battle accompanied by several autonomous or semi-autonomous remote carriers, some designated to imitate full-scale fighters, some others to jam enemy electronics, and some other others, if you will, to attack enemy air defense radars and missile launchers, depending on what functions are needed for respective missions. Decision superiority of all members of this team is ensured by the backing of an air combat cloud and seamless platform's interoperability. Going into the jet's cockpit, the pilot is, according to the Twitter post by London Bureau Chief at Aviation Week, Tony Osborne, welcomed with a digital screen that takes up virtually the entire space in front of the pilot. This screen would provide ample views of every detail in the sky and on the ground, from miles-wide maps of the battlefield to the status of enemy aircraft. This digital screen will keep the pilot as up-to-date and intelligent as possible. Intelligence that will then be shared to other members of the team and ground control at a permanent base or an aircraft carrier, as the jet would likely be carrier capable. It will also be capable of mass data radar developments in the field of passive and cognitive sensors, able to wield hypersonic, nuclear, and directed energy weapons, have access to information from space, use augmented reality, basically everything that would qualify the jet as science fiction, much like the Tempest. The Tempest program, headlined by a manned or optionally manned sixth generation stealth fighter, is one that will set the UK government back $2.4 billion by 2025. With such high costs, it's no wonder that the program originally being developed by the UK alone now has two additional partners in Italy and Sweden that officially joined in 2020. And together, all three nations, combined with their respective representing companies, including project leader BAE Systems, Rolls-Royce, Leonardo SPA, 
MBDA, and Saab are known as Team Tempest. Development began in 2015, but was accelerated from July 16, 2018, when the UK Ministry of Defence published its Combat Air Strategy document. This document made clear plans to both implement the Future Combat Air System Technology Initiative established in 2015 and study the replacement of their current top fighter, the Eurofighter Typhoon. On the same day the document was released, then Defense Secretary Gavin Williamson introduced the Tempest program at the Farnborough Air Show to bring to life an aircraft whose prime function is to conduct air-to-air -air and air-to-surface combat operations in a contested environment, whilst having the ability to concurrently conduct surveillance, reconnaissance, electronic warfare, and the ability to share data and messages with other aircraft, and coordinate actions. The fighter would carry out these tasks by incorporating a flexible payload and several of the newest technologies Europe has to offer, including deep learning AI, long-range sensing, swarming unmanned drone support, the ability to wield hypersonic and directed energy weapons, virtual cockpit in pilots' helmets, and intelligent maintenance. The Tempest test demonstrator is expected to make its maiden flight by 2025 before entering service 10 years later in 2035. By that time, Italy is expected to have invested $2.1 billion in the project. And that's not including the jet's engine, which could be developed by Rolls-Royce alone or separately by a team of the UK and Japan. The UK already contributed about $35 million for the engine design, to be followed by an additional $240 million for the production of the testbed. At this point, it's safe to say the UK is sparing no expense in making a statement to the world, particularly Russia, whose invasion of Ukraine seems to have the UK's Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, quite active in military activities. Like the FCAS fighter, Tempest Delta Winged Representative will be designed to be compatible with aircraft carriers. The fighter will also be modular, both to be easily role adapted to fit the particular mission, as well as have easily upgradable components across its lifetime. Also worth mentioning is the ingenious S-shaped ducting behind its twin engine inlets to reduce its frontal radar cross-section. And for even more improved stealth, the Tempest engines being developed will be placed deep inside the fuselage to minimize radar and infrared signatures. And there's a similar setup with the FCAS engine. Like the Tempest, the engines of the FCAS are placed deep inside the fuselage. But unlike the Tempest, the FCAS engine is in the latter stages of development. So let's discuss it a bit. For now unnamed, this engine is being developed by Safran Aircraft Engines of France. MTU Aero Engines of Germany, and ITP Aero of Spain all teamed up. The prototype is being tested and has already passed the all-important thermocolor test, a test that took about five years to conduct. During the test, heat-sensitive paint was applied to the engine's high-pressure turbine blades to measure the temperature by a change in the color of the paint. With some sections of the engine reaching 2,100 Kelvin temperatures, which is about 36% of the surface of the sun, by the way. This thermocolor test was a huge tell on how well this engine that produces all the thrust in the world could handle the literal heat that came with its capabilities. But as said before, the engine did mark a new milestone by passing the test and can now move on to other durability tests for the versatile engine, as the engine is designed to produce strong supersonic thrust easily and also cruise at low speeds over long periods when needed. This level of versatility is quickly becoming a signature for sixth-generation fighters, as it can be seen in the Tempest II. The possible Tempest engine, under development by Rolls-Royce for the last five years, will be an adaptive cycle engine, meaning the engine would function optimally at subsonic, supersonic, and transonic speeds. It will feature composite materials and an improved manufacturing process to be lightweight and have better thermal management while still keeping costs low in some way. And this engine will not only provide unprecedented levels of thrust for the fighter, but also an impossible amount of power, roughly 10 times more power than the Typhoon it's meant to replace, giving the sixth generation jet more than enough juice to run future energy weapons and other systems at their peak potential. Surely this translates to more heat from the engines, 
but project leader BAE Systems says the aircraft's heat dissipation will be manageable, so pilots can prioritize capability over stealth, or vice versa. All of these capabilities are essentially interesting for countries that skipped the fifth generation as a whole and leaped from fourth generation fighters to a sixth generation family of systems that could rival those of the US, China, and Russia. But perhaps the most interesting bit of these systems is that they do want one thing in return. They want you to subscribe to this channel and give this video a thumbs up. So kindly do so now. We'll wait. And that would be all in this video. Thanks for watching.